So are you one of those golfers who's just not consistent enough? What if I told you that the simple little mistake that you're making in your backswing is ruining your chance of being consistent, but by the end of today's video, you're gonna fix that simple little movement and get you hitting the ball better than ever before. So if we're gonna hit nicely controlled, influenced golf shots, I think most golfers are aware now that they need to control where that club face is pointing and the path the club is moving through the golf ball. But this little mistake that most golfers make at the initial part of their backswing kills the club face control, makes you compensate with the path and really can lead to some very inconsistent shots. So what is the mistake that golfers make? So from a setup, good setup position, they'll often do this. And even though I've managed to get that one going pretty straight, just drifting out to the right, let's have a little look at that swing and see the mistake I used to make and probably that a lot of you golfers are still making. So we can see as the club starts moving away, see how the toe of the club is pointing out behind me and that club face there is very much on that angle. But we can see, unfortunately, my spine angle is much more there. So that club face is really opening up, definitely working much more behind me. So as I get to the top, the club face is wide open. The only way I can try and get any kind of direction on that shot is to now get the club swinging a little bit more out to in, a little bit more left through impact. And we can see, even though I've done a little better job there, that club's still straight up to the sky. And then working down into impact. And we look in the top corner here, that club path was 2.8 degrees out to in. The club face was 2.9 degrees open to the face. So that actually gave me a fairly decent looking shot. So I think a huge problem with it starts actually with golfers understanding how they're getting that club moving away. So most golfers are very aware that they want to get the golf club working around their body. So the way they tend to get that club working around is by getting the hands and arms involved very, very early and kind of fanning the club open. It gets the club working behind them, which I think is a good thing. The problem is as you get that club fanning open, the shaft works much flatter on the way back and then from there there's no room to drop that club into so we're going to go much more this way which again is going to help because that club face is open and can be a very managed shot but there's a lot of timing involved and it can make it incredibly tough. So the little change we're going to make is that initial part of the backswing from here, we're gonna feel that the hands and arms don't get involved at all, and we're just gonna feel that the chest turns away from the golf ball. So that relationship is being kept exactly the same. And if we look at that down the line on the main camera, we can see as I turn away, now that club face is in a much stronger position. So once I can then get to the top, now as I swing down, transforms where that club face is going to be, allows me to drop the club more inside and produce a very, very different swing path, but with much more club face control. Now it can be hard initially to get that straight into a full swing. So what I'd say is let's look at just feeling that you turn back and allow the wrist to hinge, almost like a half back swing, and then we're going to swing through. I'm going to hit a couple and I'm going to look at how the delivery of the club's different and do I manage to control that club face better in the initial part of the backswing so I don't have to compensate. Now you can see there my little waggle is an absolute killer because the club works back behind me and it's all hands and wrists. So from there, just turn the body on the way back. That felt good, solid. Did leak a little bit off to the right, but let's go one more. Little hard swing, very much turning the body earlier in the backswing. That felt much better. Let's see, did I do it any different when I slowed the swing down? 
Okay, so as I turn my body earlier, was my club face better? Well, my club face is now there, and my spine angle is there. So we're not quite matched up, but we can see that's much, much better. The club face is still slightly open there, which is definitely something that I do. So we work, not a full back swing, but it's probably a little longer than I thought that was gonna be. And then as we work down, have I managed to control that club face still? Again, we can see spine angles here, club face is there. So the club face is a little bit open, but much better than it was before. And we can see the path just slightly from the inside, but very, very straight. But their club face open five degrees. But I see so many golfers that are worried about, you know, is my path pad on the way down? Don't really think much about club face control, but if you don't fix the face first, it's very, very difficult. And I'm not always saying you have to do it textbook or perfectly here. Some golfers are very good with the club face opening up a little bit and then compensating. Phil Mickelson would be a great example of this. Someone who's got a lot of club face rotation through the bottom. Somebody like Jim, Jim Furyk is much less rotation. I think if you look at consistency, you'd probably take Jim Furyk's over Phil's. Phil's maybe a bit more exciting, but I think as a club golfer, you'd lean more towards how Furyk delivers it over Mickelson. Might not want your swing to look like his. So we're gonna go now into slightly longer swings and definitely you can still see my club face is starting to just rotate a little bit more than I would like. So I'm gonna try and really exaggerate that feeling on a fuller shot, see how it feels. Now that felt really good. Felt strong, didn't feel then that I had to manipulate the club face very much. But let's see, because very often feel and real can be a little bit different. Now, I have to be honest, this felt different even compared to normal for me. So as the club works back, is that club face better? I think if we draw those little lines on there again, I think I'm getting there. Still don't think I've mastered it, but they're much closer together. So that club face definitely not rotating, the club definitely not working behind me. So much, much simpler movement. Doesn't look hugely different at the top with me, which it never really does. But as I start down, then all of a sudden we see, as I'm getting down here, again, how's that club face looking? It's definitely starting to lean more towards where I would want. Again, it's maybe slightly open, but there's much less manipulation needed from there. And then as I work down into impact, we can see up on the right hand side there, two degrees from the inside, one degrees closed club face. So much, much easier to control. And that should make it much simpler for me and you to hit good shots. So you might never have checked this of yourself. So if you haven't, definitely look at that down the line swing, see where that club is halfway back. You should be pretty much in line with your toe line with that leading edge the same as your spine. If you're somebody that makes this mistake, the club's gonna be much further behind and that face is gonna be looking more to the sky. And if that's the case, really easy. Keep the hands and arms out on that initial part. Then as you push down on the handle, the club works up. Then that club face just doesn't need manipulating through the bottom. And if you've watched my old videos, lots and lots of manipulation, lots of shape, bit of inconsistency. I'm definitely getting better with it. And everyone that I work on with this in their takeaway notices a difference straight away in consistency of ball striking, distance, and accuracy. So get there, make that nice, simple move, and start enjoying some of the best shots you will have ever hit.